freshman from Minnesota, an unseeded player, will try to win the championship against Greg Holmes, a sophomore from Utah, the top-seeded player in this tournament. And the winner will join an elite list of singles champions that includes John McEnroe, Jimmy Connors, Stan Smith, Bob Lutz, Dennis Ralston, and many more. Today, ESPN presents the 99th annual NCAA Division I Men's Tennis Championships. A very pleasant good afternoon. This is John Sanders along with international player and coach Peter Burwash. And I think you're really going to be entertained this afternoon as we get to the championship of men's singles for the NCAA Division I for 1983. You're going to see an, uh, an unknown player, but a player who could be a superstar of the future. Right, Peter? I think so, John. Uh, I'm very excited about this afternoon. Uh, Greg Holmes is, without doubt, one of the most exciting tennis players to ever come on the scene since, I think, Jimmy Connors in his intercollegiate days, even more so than John McEnroe. He uses uh, two hands both sides. He's very quick. He's, in, he's an enthusiastic player with an outstanding attitude. The other player, also unknown, unranked really coming into the tournament. He was unseated. Let's talk about young Mr. Paulette, who came from Sweden and decided to play college tennis at Minnesota. Needless to say, he's been the big surprise here. Holmes was the number one seed, and uh, Paulette wasn't even seated. But he's a good player. He uh, beat uh, Mats Valander uh, five times and just... Ringles finals. And one of those finalists from Utah, man who does not get a lot of publicity. He's 5'10", 160 pounds. He's not real big. His name is Greg Holmes, an incredible 47-4 and four record this year, Peter. And I know you really like the way he plays. Yeah, as I said earlier to you, John, uh, this is one of the most exciting players I've had a chance to see in a, in a long time. And uh, what's going to be interesting here today with Greg Holmes is to see whether or not he can actually uh, hang in there in the finals. He started to get a little bit tired yesterday, and I think it's the, the thickness of the air. He comes from Salt Lake City, which is a high altitude area, and uh, he works so hard at the game. Uh, we're going to see one of the best athletes in tennis today in Greg Holmes, and I think if he can stay strong, he's definitely the favorite. And his opponent is not from the United States, but instead is from Sweden. Colette's going to have to work P to how well either of them volley. I think that'll determine the match because they're both so good off the ground. Another winner on the backhand. Oh. Holmes would be the favorite, obviously, coming in. He's the top seeded player, has been most of this year in collegiate tennis that they've had down in this part of the country in Georgia. Uh, they were only one match behind starting today, the final round of play. today because uh, these two guys return serve so well that it, it's almost a neutralizing factor. They're not big servers. One zero. Paige, tell us a little more about that because I know it was one of the best ones of the week. Actually, uh, it was very exciting for towards the end where um, Holmes actually held nine match points in the uh, on Pate and he finally won the 10th match point and Pate had a match point on Holmes and went down to 7-6 in the third. Game home. A love game Pete and Holmes jumps out in front. Three nothing in this first. Interesting to note here what uh, Greg Holmes does. The first time I've ever seen this on a tennis player. What he does is on his forehand side and his backhand side there he has the right hand at the bottom and now what he'll do on the forehand side is he'll switch and he's got the left hand on the bottom. An amazing amount of dexterity. One of the best racket artists I've ever seen in the game. Game number four, set one. Wet, they teamed up for doubles. They won the number one 
Well, that won the number one singles championship in the Big Ten, and Erickson won the number two singles championship. Great shot that time by Holmes. That's what's so good about uh, uh, Greg. If you notice there, he used uh, one hand on the uh, on the return. He he can do that. Look at that. Notice how he uses one hand and still gets it back into play. A lot of two-hand players are not that effective when it comes time to just using one hand. With a little bit of an edge right now. Another backhand winner for Holmes. Whoa. Holmes loves this end because the wind is holding the ball up a little bit more and it's enabling him to get in and, and uh, take that ball on the rise. He likes and uh, take that ball on the rise. He likes to catch it above what's called the white band on top of the net. That's a three foot area. The net's being three foot at the center. And he likes to get in and catch that ball above the three foot area so he can hit straight through the ball, which makes it which is so tough on his opponent. Let to the net, and he passes him. Super One, two. Notice here, Holmes, he can hold that ball so much later on the two hands, both sides. And so when it comes time for the passing shot, he can hold and hit that short angle cross court. Very critical for Paulette if he is going to come in, to make sure that he gets a lot more depth on it. One of the questions that remains to be answered is whether either one of these young men will turn pro. I think the, they're leaning toward returning to school. Two, three. I guess that's a big question with a lot of the players in the tournament. Some of the players uh, electing now to move on to professional tennis. His attitude is just uh, super to it. One thing about Holmes, either he never gives up on anything back there, does he? He'll chase them all. His attitude is just uh, super to it. He, he, Greg Holmes is what tennis really needs at this point. Uh, as I travel around, one of the questions I always get asked on airplanes, wherever, is what's wrong with the attitude of today's players? And uh, uh, Greg Holmes, he's, he's, he's a very, very humble attitude, uh, and he, his coach, F.D. Robbins, said he does exactly what he's, he's told. He's a good, a good person to, to work with, and as a result, has improved tremendously. Zero one. His coach is Harry James, who's actually been in a wheelchair for 38 years and uh, does not accompany with him. Seen, and I'm including the professionals in that listing now. Uh, does he have a spot in professional tennis in your way of thinking? Oh, very much so. In fact, uh, he'd, uh, he'd definitely beat a, a good number of the professionals. I think he could, within the first year, he'll move into somewhere between 40 and 50, given a little bit of experience, a little better volley. Gets the winner at the net that time. Greg Holmes, on the other hand, he has adopted the uh, style of John McEnroe where he puts one foot behind the other and he actually develops a real good body coil into it which helps him and he, he's a small guy, about five foot seven, and hits it very hard. What are the advantages of standing that way as opposed to standing a little more straight on? Here we get through the... We're uh... doing that. And uh, the advantage is that for a smaller player in particular, they get the little extra body coil in which helps accelerate their, uh, their racket head through. Too bad. Palat really got himself out of trouble there. It was a good point. Long. This guy's kid, when you get in your late 20s and get a lot older, then it's a lot tougher. <laughs> <laughs> then you pace yourself. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, beautiful backhand shot that time. The game goes to home. Four to two. 
the games are even at 1-1 here in the second set. Holmes taking the first set 6-3. Another backhand winner. Holmes having a good deal of success on his backhand. Once again, Greg Holmes, tremendous penetration from the baseline, something that very few players can do. Ball just inside the line there. Even yesterday in the tiebreaker, John, he just kept hitting. There was His English since coming over from Sweden, and uh, he said it's much better. He's even starting to think in English, which is the toughest part of it. Yeah. Holmes coming up quickly to put it away. Now he's got four break points. Notice here, Greg Holmes still penetrating, coming in all the time. Just can't give him those short balls. Back to live action, an ace, the first one we've had by. Yeah, Greg Holmes is a real credit to the game. Uh, I've been so impressed with him as I've seen him here play here this week. Holmes has won six straight points now. And it's one all. Puts it away. Speaking of attitude, Doug. Against Frederick Paulette, 6-3. So he can win it all right here. Comes to the net. And finally puts it away. Collette was hustling, but Holmes had him out positioned at the net. About Holmes is he continues to, to hit out. A match point is a pressure situation, even though you're up three love. It is match point number two. Collette got it. And Holmes puts it away. Greg Holmes of Utah is the new NCAA singles champion in men's division one for 1983. He wins it 6-3 and 6-2 and a very appreciative crowd here at the Henry S. Field Tennis Stadium on the campus of the University of Georgia in Athens, Georgia. Greg Holmes, the number one seed, easily defeats Frederick Paulette, winning the championship. We'll be back to talk to the new men's singles champion of NCAA tennis for 1983 right after this. Here in the championship this afternoon, an, an excellent victory for you. I know you had never played your opponent today. Uh, how do you feel winning the NCAA championship on your second crack at it? Uh, great. Uh, I felt like I played very well. He, he had the same type of game as me, uh, and I, I'm pretty happy the way I played. Of course, Frederick Paulette, kind of an unknown, I guess, coming in. Uh, how much preparation could you actually do for him, somebody that you'd never played before? Uh, well, I've never seen him play before today, and I don't think he's ever really seen me play before. So I think we were both both uh, you know new to uh, you know new to their both styles. So um, not not very much preparation. No. Peter, I know you enjoyed the match and uh, the way that he played today. He was dominant, certainly. Very much so, John. I think probably what was the most impressive was just the uh, the way he got out in front early. I, I felt the first couple of games were really the critical aspect of the match, and from then on, he really uh, really dominated it. And I'd just like to uh, uh, ask you, wh where do you get your incredible, intense concentration? I think, uh, as I've had a chance to see a lot of the younger players come up, they get bothered by the wind, the different court surfaces, the crowds. What do you attribute that to? Uh, well, you just have to try to put those out of your mind. The wind, you know, is definitely a factor, but you just, you just have to put those out of your mind. And that's what I think I've improved on this year, is my concentration. And I just try to concentrate on the ball. And so I want to win, so that helps me carry out through the match. Now that you have won the NCAA championship, what about your future plan? Uh, well, my plan is to go back to school next year, but uh, I'm going to go out and play the Pro Tour this summer and see how well I do. And if I do well, I might turn pro, but uh, right now my plans are to go back to school. 
Greg Holmes, our NCAA men's singles champion for Division I for 1983. Congratulations to you. Our thanks to Peter Burwash for being with us this afternoon in Athens, Georgia. It is all over for 1983. We have our men's singles champion from Athens, Georgia, for Peter Burwash and Greg Holmes, our new champion for 1983. This is John Sanders.